This weekend, Virginia International Raceway and the Sports Car Club of America combined to form a mecca for lovers of sports car racing. Almost 500 drivers in over 20 classes do battle in a race for the gold. Since 1964, the SCCA has been crowning national champions at its annual runoffs. It's the peak of the Summit Racing Equipment SCCA Road Racing Program. For the second straight year, welcome to the track that Paul Newman once called Heaven on Earth for the historic 60th running of the SCCA runoffs. Welcome to a beautiful day at Virginia International Raceway. Long shadows indicate we're late in the afternoon, but we've had a fantastic day of racing and more to come. I'm John Fippen. Alongside me is Lefty McLeod, Hayward Wagner with us down on the pit lane. And we are about to bring you the fastest fendered cars that run in the runoffs. Fendered? Prototype 1 coming up. These cars... Uh, <laughs> fendered, I guess I could say. You know, And it has nothing to do with the... With the uh, uh, with a guitar, but uh, nonetheless, uh, they're not open wheel cars, but for all practical purposes, okay. underneath the skin, they may well be. Hey, Lefty. How are you, John? I'm well. I, I, we're, we're glad. It's late in the afternoon, and we're all a little punchy. But uh, Hayward Wagner, rescue us uh, as uh, you're down there uh, trackside, and you've got some insight that I'm sure will make me sound like I know what I'm talking about only hope we have real problems. Uh, I just want to take a quick moment before these cars get on track to look at one of these cars up close. This is pole sitter Todd Vandercourt's car. And I want to just point a couple of things. I know when these cars are on course and at speed, it can be tough to tell just how much detail work really goes into them. So starting right here, we have rolled carbon fiber on the outside of the front splitter just to keep more air, trap air through there. This is the push rod for the front suspension. The push rod is encased in carbon fiber. You've got these little finlets right here that kind of move air around. Again, another rolled carbon piece here with more fins at the back. All four wheels on this car, carbon wheel covers just to smooth the profile down. Look at how low the wing is to the ground and the finning on the wing, the swan mounts, and of course, the shark fin there in the center. Everything on this car, 100% with a purpose, as slippery as they can possibly make it with as much downforce as they can possibly give it. Thanks, Hayward, and that that really does that really sets it to a T. Uh, Lefty, uh, as we've often said, this is basically a Formula Atlantic car with uh, with bodywork. Yeah, these things are absolutely amazing. They make so much speed. The power of these things, they are going to be just lightning quick around this awesome track, and they'll be going down into turn one, probably two, maybe three wide on that first lap. All the grip in the world around that hairpin. NASCAR, they're just going to be screaming through. They'll get through left hook, and by the time they come around five through the snake, they're going to be roaring. They'll be doing probably 150 going through the climbing S's, probably 100 140 around South Bend. They'll have to eventually hit the brakes to get down to Oak Tree, but they come off of that. They'll be doing it again, probably about 150 or so going down the back straight, climbing a hill down the back straight. Then they'll get up there, run down that roller coaster faster than anything else out here can do. Coming off a hog pen is going to make everyone else looking like they're standing still. These things are amazing. Indeed they are. Uh, the Elan DPO2 has become, uh, I won't say the preferred chassis, but it's certainly one at the sharp edge of the field. That's basically a, a, an older IMSA prototype lights, uh, prototype challenge car. Uh, and uh, so very, very sophisticated, but we've still got some uh, uh, some stores in the field. Uh, there's a wind first and a downing. Uh, so, uh, you know, again, these are uh, very, very unusual cars. <laughs> and by the way, speaking the, of the wind first. Yeah, speaking of the wind first, that has a two stroke Kohler engine in it, and the smoke is normal. It's supposed to do that. I have to say it, it's full of glory. Exactly. It is all of it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So let's, uh, it's a small but mighty field. Let's introduce them to you as we've got 10 cars just about to go. And again, the fastest closed wheel cars in the field. Starting outside of row number five is car 22. That's John Manfroy out of San Jose, California and the San Francisco region in a store Suzuki. Next to him, car number nine, Greg Case out of Peoria, Illinois, the central Illinois region in another store Suzuki. The only rookie in the field starts outside of row four. That's car 21, Todd Parks from Massachusetts, the New England region. He's in a store Suzuki. Next to him, the 82 of Matthew uh, Gendron out of Monson, 
Massachusetts in the New England region in a downing Atlanta Beach Mazda. Moving up outside of row three, the most experienced driver in the field. This is his 25th runoff starts, and he's a second generation racer, Jason Miller, out of Plymouth, Wisconsin in the Milwaukee region in the win first WF1 Kohler. Next to him is the 23 of Jim Devonport out of Alamo, California, the San Francisco region, a two-time champion of the class, most recently in 2018 in one of the Elan DPO2 Mazdas. In row number two on the outside, car 88, John McAleer out of Roswell, Georgia, in the Atlanta region in another Elan. Then the uh, 48 of Lee Alexander from Springfield, Tennessee in the Tennessee region, a two-time champion in the class, most recently at Indy in 2021. He's in a store, Kawasaki. And then on the front row, car number 29, Chip Romer out of Lake Havasu City, Arizona in the San Francisco region. He is the defending winner of the class and is a lawn and your pole sitter. Car number 19, Todd Vanacore out of Ormond Beach, Florida in the Central Florida region in yet another of the Elan DPO2 Mazdas. A total of 83 runoff starts among the field, five championships among the three drivers that have won it before. Yeah, this is going to be fascinating. I, one of the stories that we had mentioned in some of the other classes definitely plays out here, and that is tires. If you look at the front of this field, your pole sitter, Vanacore, as well as Lee Alexander, John, I think even John McAleer are all on the Hoosiers, but Chip Romer's on the Goodyear's. Not so easy in these classes to just bolt on another set of tires because you have to change the suspension geometry. The tires are all different dimensions and sizes, so you're kind of stuck with what you got going through a season, and that's how this is going to play out. Romer was the early leader in qualifying on Tuesday. Vanacore came back on uh, the warmer Thursday was able to take pole. Watch how that develops. Whose tires heat up and really fire up faster? That may dictate the early stage of this race. Vanacore and Romer uh, in the first two positions. Uh, qualifying times a 142.6 for Todd Vanacore, a 142.7 for Chip Romer. Uh, so very, very close together. Less than a tenth of a second separating those two. As they begin to form up side by side, as they work their way down the hill. You can see the store of Lee Alexander. Very different looking bodywork on that car as the Elans surround him in the first two rows. Then the wind first with the light blue paint job. You can see the pipe organ pipes coming out of the back of that. That six cylinder Kohler two stroke power plant. As we wait for the green flag to fly and we're green. Our pole sitter, Todd Vandekor, gets a good jump. Chip Romer slots in right behind him. Diving down to the inside. No change in position there. It's a side-by-side -side for third spot. As Romer with the lead in that green liveried number 19. Devonport with a fantastic start. He started on row three. He's up into second. was able to get around Romer, who I, again, he's on those good years. They might take just a little bit longer, but Devonport's on him too. So these two guys both with the same sort of condition, but it's Devonport able to take the advantage. Yeah, I thought that was Romer. I, I misidentified it. Devonport makes a great jump up into that second spot. Still very tightly back and early going. These drivers will be a little circumspect on the first couple of laps. We talked about it in an earlier prototype race. It takes a while to get these tires up to full temperature before these drivers can really begin to let it hang out. As the top four breaking away just a little bit. Devonport very quick in the early lap here. Look at this already on the back of Anacor pressuring him. So maybe the Goodyears are an advantage in this early stage. Look at the speed he's able to carry. Coming off of Oak Tree underneath the tail end of Anacor's car. Romer and uh, McAleer also doing battle for the third spot as they work their way up the hill. I think that might be Alexander right behind Romer. McAleer, I think, in the white body car, a little bit further back in fifth. Look at this, already side by side, oh, that's dirt. Oh, touch. Contact between our pole sitter, Todd Vanacore. Oh, that is unfortunate. He was so fast. They just got a little bit tangled up, a little bit out in the dirt and spun. Looks like he's going to... But let the field go by. That's Hope, a tough position. Hopefully he kept it rolling. Yeah. But look at this. They go side by side up here as Devonport goes to the left. Devonport's the one who gets to the grass and really with nowhere to go. Vanicore is the one, though, in the end ends up spinning out. Let's see if he's able to continue at least. It looks like he is. That's a good sign. Yeah, yeah. So clearly Romer just, uh, or the 19 of uh, Vanicore obviously didn't know that Devonport was there yeah. and uh, forced him off track and 
that contact caused him to spin. So, as a reset, Devonport now in the lead. Lee Alexander in second, Chip Romer in third. And then a little bit of a gap back to John McAleer in the 88. Jason Miller in the win first in the fifth spot. Well, it is you know, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. The sun is setting right over those drivers' uh, left shoulder there. Yep. And I'm wondering if that was a bit of a glare on him. He just didn't see Devonport over there. And Devonport had nowhere to go out there in the dirt. But Devonport looks like his speed is just fine. And that's uh, Lee Alexander in the 48 right behind him. Romer now starting to get his uh, pendulum spinning there as he's starting to pick up the pace. Devonport in the Elan, Alexander in the store, and Romer in another of the Elans. And uh, McAleer in the blue and white Elan. And then there's Jason Miller in the Kohler powered machine. So there's your top five right in the same camera shot. Todd Parks a great case, having a great battle behind. Side by side for the lead. Devonport and Alexander. Alexander getting it done. Devonport now in the reverse role. He was on the inside. He made sure he left room for Alexander on his left. He knows what it's like to be over there. But look at Alexander in that much smaller chassis in that store. A lot of like, uh, very similar to the P2 cars, but with a bigger power plant. He's a, I think he's a, a Kawasaki in there, but it's a bigger engine than some of the 1,000 GSXR Suzuki's that a lot of the guys run in P2. So this thing's definitely got more motor with that low profile. But look at those much bigger Mazda DPs behind him. You just see those things come roaring down the straights, but look at that. Devonport right underneath the back of his wing. Yeah, Devonport really late on the brakes, probably generating a little more downforce. It's a bigger bodied car, so you would expect that it probably generates a little more downforce, and that gives him an advantage in braking. Uh, but the fastest car in the track the last time around, McAleer, just a little quicker even than Lee Alexander. And you can see, look at that white car with the blue trim on that thing. He is, he's definitely keeping up. Now you got a four-way battle in the fastest cars on the track. McAleer started back in fourth position outside of row number two. And those four have broken away a bit from the win first of Jason Cole, uh, Jason Miller in the Kohler-powered machine. He's going to call him Kohler. Is it yeah. a Kohler engine in there in that uh, six-cylinder two-stroke? I know. His dad worked for Kohler for many, many years. Jeff Miller, a, I think a six-time national champion in his own right, so Jason a second generation. Racer. Oh no! Oh, and there's another spin from our leader, Lee Alexander. Too much curb on the exit of Oak Tree, and it just un unsettled the car. And the off he spins. Here we go, we're gonna get a replay of it. As he comes into Oak Tree, misses the first apex just a little bit, and he just went a little wide, and that just Oh, and you can see the sparks even as the car is bottoming out once yeah. he hits those curbs. At that point, you lose any bit of arrow, any bit of grip. And then right behind him, wait a minute, that's... Is that Romer? No, it couldn't be Romer. I'm not sure who that one was. It could be actually Greg Case in the number nine. We'll, we'll catch up with that a little bit. But for look at him trying to shake the dirt out of the uh, air intakes. Oh, there you go. You're absolutely right. It was Greg Case, and almost a carbon copy of the spin. So from... much carbon. All the carbon everywhere, even in there copying <laughs> each other as they're spinning. It's definitely carbon. <laughs> exactly. So almost a, an identical spin to Alexander. So anyway, back to the front. <laughs> Jim Devonport has retaken the lead. All right. So, yeah, Devonport back to the lead. Romer now at a nice gap behind him, about a half a second. McAleer, another half a second back from there. So you got three prototype one sports racers a second apart in that grouping. And Jason Miller back there, just kind of turning laps, keeping an eye on him, and that's Day Jr. Greg Case. That is Case. That is Case. Yeah, Case was the other spinner there at the exit of Oak Tree, and he may have shaken something loose. A yeah. uh, little bit of smoke coming out of that car, and uh, he made it right under the starter stand. Yeah, it's pit out there on that front straight for Case. He might be able to get a, a little help to uh, get back into the pit lane and not bring out a full course yellow. Meanwhile, Devonport, Romer, and McAleer breaking away from Jason Miller. I tell you, Devonport's on a really good lap this time around. Personal best in the first sector, race best in the second sector. Probably going to be a trap speed. Some, yeah, we're just shy of 150, 149 miles an hour in the trap speeds at the end of the back straight. Again, it's an uphill straightaway. That, that is a very steep hill. And if you haven't been out here to VIR, you need to stand down there and look up that hill. And you can be standing back at the South Tower and not see looking up as this is the 19 of Vanacor on the recovery drive. Going around John Manfroy in the uh, red store. And we are going to go full course yellow. 
as uh, Case's car not in a place where they can recover it safely. So we're going to slow the car down, pack him up behind the safety car. It'll be a quick recovery because he's right there at pit uh, out. And so hopefully they'll be able to get him gathered up and we'll be able to get back to racing very quickly. There's uh -oh. the 48 of Alexander after his spin. Yeah, so this, will, this will be a big help to Lee Alexander and to Todd Vandecourt both. This will make this race very interesting as we pull this pack back together. Yeah, they are both ha very, very happy to see that full course yellow come out. Look at the wing damage in the back of Vandecourt. That's from the contact with Devonport there on that for opening lap. Yeah, that's going to cost him a little downforce for sure. As the field coming by to see the full course yellow, and they'll begin to slow it down and get picked up by the safety car. So it's been a hectic first four laps with uh, Jim Devonport getting a great jump at the uh, very start of the race from his third row starting position up into second in the early going. And since we've got uh, a yellow flag here, it'll give us a chance to catch our breath and also a chance to thank some of the folks that make the racing possible here at the 60th running of the SCCA National Championship runoffs. A car like this shouldn't exist. Something this big, this luxurious, shouldn't move like a Mazda. And yet, it does. <laughs> oh my God, it sounds epic as well. This car is an SUV with bragging rights. The all new three row Mazda CX-90. Okay, so pretend this is your race car. It's on the trailer, on the way home after a day at the track. And say you have an accident. Ouch. But at least your truck's insurance will pay for another one? Yeah, not so fast. Your standard insurance probably won't pay to replace your car. That's true whether it's in the trailer, in the paddock, in the garage, or in the repair shop. If you want to be covered for the whole value of your race car, you need guaranteed value coverage from Haggerty. We agree on an accurate value up front, and in the event of a covered total loss anywhere off the track, we pay that amount. You'll be protected in storage, in transit, in the paddock, or a repair shop against collision, fire, theft, no matter what or where you race. All for less per year than you spend on a set of racing tires. Haggerty, let's drive together. It's Haggerty Race Days presented by Mazda as we are under our full course yellow here in our prototype one class as we had a car of uh, Greg Case roll to a stop. You can see it just there off to uh, the right hand side of your frame and they needed to get a safety vehicle out there. There it is uh, to get that car out of harm's way and right there at the pit exit. So it should be a pretty quick recovery, but it looks like they're gonna to have to bring out a tilt bed. Uh, that car apparently had a, a, enough of a problem that they can't flat tow it. So yeah. it'll take them just a moment to get that car loaded up on the tilt bed. So a, a we may box. go around one more lap. Yeah, what if he had a gearbox issue or a clutch issue? Because the way he spun coming off Oak Tree, you know, there's something going on there. And then a half a lap later, comes to a spot in a pretty strategic place to pull into. Probably thought this is the only way I'm going to get once he got past pit in. So yeah. should be pretty quick once they flat tow him out of there. So it's been an eventful uh, first uh, half a dozen laps in this one as we're working race lap number six behind the safety car. Uh, these races are 15 laps or 40 minutes, whichever comes first. And at the pace these cars run, we should have no trouble getting all the laps in unless we have another extended yellow flag. Well, this race is going to be Gail, very interesting when that uh, pace car does pull in because as we were just showing there, you've got Lee Alexander, Todd Vanacore. They both started up near the front course. Vanacore, your pole sitter. They are now sixth and seventh. There's a Jason Miller and a Todd Parks that separates those two guys, Alexander Vanacore, from the front three, Devonport, Romer, and McAleer. This really benefited Lee Alexander and Todd Vanacore. Let's see if they quickly, as the, when the race does restart, get around Miller and Parks and make this a five-car chase at the front of the field again. Yeah, Vanacore fell all the way back to ninth position, uh, uh, basically to the back of the, uh, back of the pack uh, after his 
off. And uh, same situation for Lee Alexander, who spun on his own, basically. Uh, just kept, caught a little too much curve at the exit of Oak Tree. It spun off two drivers right well into the grass. Vanacore had a little help as he got together with Jim Devonport right at the top of the hill in the early stages of this. But again, like I say, this is a godsend for them as they now have the ability to pack up to the back. And assuming there's no significant damage, we thought there might be a little bit of a derangement of Todd Vanacore's rear wing, which could adversely affect his ability to go at full pace. You can see, yeah, just a little uh, that wing end yeah. plate bent in just a bit, but I don't think that's going to be enough to cause him significant issues. It doesn't look like it's moving. It looks like it's just stuck right where it is, which is probably fine. Um, and he was able to turn. Remember, I think that happened on the first or second lap. Well, yeah, he yeah. has done 145 zeros in this race, which is right on par with what the front three, those guys had done a couple of high 44s, but I don't think there's any issue there for Vanacore uh, and for Alexander, of course, just the big spin there when he bottomed out going over the curb. So I think those two are in a very good position here to get back near the front. It may come back again to who can it can fire off those tires. Is there still enough heat in them? You've got the two guys at the front, Devonport and Rower, both on Goodyear's. Those other ones we're talking about, I believe they're all on Hoosiers. Let's see who's got the tire heat in them. And I think I see lights are out on the pace car, if I have that right. Getting ready to restart. We want to uh, acknowledge our pole sitter, Todd Vanacore. He, he won just about everything there is to win here. Uh, not only did he take the uh, Tire Rack Pole Award, but he also won uh, the Hawk Performance Breakthrough Award, which is awarded for the driver who makes the most improvement in positions from Tuesday to Wednesday qualifying. He picked up two spots. So Todd Vanacore, the winner of the uh, set of Hawk brake pads from Hawk Performance. As we are going to go green, the lights out on the safety car. A single file restart just as they complete race lap number six. Not even halfway home. It's been an eventful race so far. Let's see how it shakes out as we get ready to go back to racing. You can see the off to the right, the start zone. That's at the leader's option as to when he drops the throttle and right away Chip Romer gets the jump and Romer goes side by side and he has got the lead at the moment but I think Devonport may be able to get back nope Romer's able to Romer stay in front to sweep around the outside and John McAleer right there in third spot we haven't called McAleer's name much but look at these two over here. That's Lee Alexander and Todd Vanacore now up under Jason Miller. I did see Todd Parks basically pointed these guys by, probably realizing he's not in their fight. He let them go ahead, and now you got Jason Miller as the, the one thing holding Alexander and Vanacore from the front three, but now it's a six-car train. There's Parks and John Manfroy, the last car on the lead lap, last car running in this one. And already Todd Vanacore thinking about making a move on Alexander as they climb the hill. Alexander in that almost looks like a prototype two car with a little bigger motor. Yeah, similar chassis. Yeah, yeah, very similar. As they work their way through Oak Tree, this is where Alexander had it all go wrong. And Vanacore doing the same thing, going a little bit wide yeah. there at the exit of Oak Tree. So Miller there in the uh, the two-stroke six-cylinder uh, Kohler-powered car. He admitted they don't necessarily have that uh, that, that top-end power for there. Sometimes power is a bit of an issue there. They try to be slippery, and you can see it there, not able to quite get off that corner. But in the draft there behind McAleer, he seems to be doing all right and staying with this pack. Also being that it is a two-stroke, it is a carbureted. Those pipes are so critical. There's a certain temperature they got to get the whole car to. He may be actually happy the way this thing's going. He might have gotten him up to temp and then picked the whole uh, crowd pulled back together. But a little slippery there coming down the hill. The handling, a little bit of an issue for them. Now he's got one on one side, maybe one on the other as they go down the front straight. Vanacore tucks in right behind him to take advantage of the draft. He moves around Alexander. That puts Vanacore up into fifth position now. As Jason Miller hanging on to sixth spot. Alexander content with seventh right at the moment at least as they're now closing down on John McAleer. As the field pretty much single file into the snake, the lower part of the S's. 
Yeah, I'd be watching Vanicor now. Now that he's gotten past Miller, he is going to be on that mission to get back to the front. We know what he did in qualifying and the pace that he has. He's pretty happy to have finally gotten that move done on Miller. And you can see now Lee Alexander's going to struggle a little bit to get around Miller. He may have to wait till the back straight. By then, Vanicor may be gone. But look at look at Todd already been catching up to uh, McAleer for third. As Romer and Devonport have got to be, they, their crew has got to be telling them, hey guys, uh, you know, Todd's coming. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Top four look to be just about equally spaced right now, then a little bit of a gap back to Jason Miller and Lee Alexander. Romer at the start, uh, the first start of the race, did not have the greatest start and uh, fell back a little bit. It looked like Devonport had greater pace, but now all of a sudden we have this uh, full course yellow period, and now Chip is the guy with the, the speed. And Devonport now looks like he's kind of uh, on his heels a little bit, waiting on uh, for that thing to come into its its happy place as Miller continues to hold off Lee Alexander. A couple of our front runners have won the Super Sweep, which is one of the hardest awards to win in road racing. In 2016, uh, Jim Devonport won it. And then last year, Chip Romer was one of the winners. In fact, I think we only had two Super Sweep winners in the whole runoffs last year, and uh, Romer was one of them. Well, that race last year in P1, if you want to go back and watch that on the archives and SCCA.com, trust me, it's there. They had rain only from the climbing S's around uh, the, uh, the south paddock down there at Oak Tree and about halfway down Madison Avenue Street, and the entire north end was bone dry. The race started that way. Two cars came in for tires, I believe. Well, I know one of them is Romer. I think the other might have been Devonport. Yep. And talk about a great decision because now they're able to take South Bend in rain tires and take uh, Oak Tree on rain tires and get a great run and just tiptoe around the rest. And it, the strategy paid off. They were able to, to really run past the field. Romer was able to get his first championship. It was a fun one to watch. A little bit of chaos. These guys know for the rest of the field, if you're not Romer, you're happy that it's dry. Exactly. Look at this gaggle of cars. They are absolutely nose to tail here. Yeah. At the moment, Chip Romer with the lead, but right there in his wheel tracks is Jim Devonport. Yeah, Devonport, I think, uh, getting himself back into his groove, but it's, it may be a little bit too late because he's got company. McAleer and Vanacore now right behind them. Look at this, four of these cars as we've got another car pulling off. Is that, is that Alexander? Uh, it might be. Can't see the number from this distance, but Alexander, you know, didn't seem to have the pace after the restart. I thought after the uh, the restart that he might be able to mix it up with these guys. I think it is. Yeah, based on timing and scoring, he hasn't tripped the speed traps yet on that Madison Avenue straight. So, yeah, well, we have a new leader now, though, as Devonport back to the front. Yeah, Devonport got around Chip Romer. So we'll see if he can stretch the advantage. Again, Devonport got that great jump at the drop of the green flag on the initial restart, or the initial start, should we say. And then got tangled up with Todd Vanacor. But right at the moment, he is the man at the front. And here comes the aforementioned Mr. Vanacor right on the back of John McAleer. McAleer in the white with red trim. All these very similar cars, all of those Elan DPs, all in, all in Mazdas. But you can see, as Hayward pointed out on the grid, there's just a little bit of subtle differences when it comes to the aerodynamics and how the front scoops are made, how much uh, side pod is exposed, how the rear wings are done. Just And even you look at the air intakes. you got the two at the trailing here for uh, McAleer and Vanicor with the big scoop. The front guys were over in Devonport not running that scoop. So it, it's just a little bit different in how they want to prep their cars. There but look at this, Vanicor. Yeah, pops out around McAleer. And able to make the make the pass uh, pretty easily, actually, as they crest the hill there at the roller coaster, steeply downhill into 15 and 16, and then finally coming into the final turn, a hog pin. Reason being, when the track was originally formed, there was a hog pin on the outside of that turn, hence the name. It's appropriate, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Down the front stretch they come. 23 of Jim Devonport, your new leader. Jim Romer in second, staying right with him. Yeah, 
These guys are all running mid 144s on these laps out here. That is a screaming fast lap time. I know they qualified in the 42s, but we're talking 11 laps in. They're still running 44s. The lap record in a race run here, Todd Slusher ran, he, obviously a veteran of this, uh, these, this class as well. He ran a 43-4 around here, I think back in 19. So yeah, there's, there's potential out there, but I think with the way the track temps are today, these guys in 44s is uh, probably about as quick as they're gonna get, but that is amazing. Shout out to John McAleer. Uh, after getting past, it looked like he might fade into the sunset, but he is staying right with our goal center, Todd Vanicor, in that battle for the final podium spot. Look at that little twitch, though, coming around South Bend as we have the camera there on McAleer. So he's hustling it. He's really wheeling that thing to stay behind Vanicor. Devonport, though. Starting to get away at yeah. the front. Yeah, great launch there off of Oak Tree. He really has that turned down. Long toe for uh, Jim Devonport all the way from Alamo, California. But Vanacor, cue the Jaws music, closing up on the back of Chip Romer. <laughs> he kind of is. As we look at uh, lap times, he was almost three tenths quicker on that last on his last lap. We'll see as they trip the line here to complete race lap number 11. Four to go as they cross the stripe. Vanagor actually pulling away from McAleer. You were saying how close McAleer was staying. That right there was McAleer. A little trouble off Oak Tree. For Vanagor, no trouble at all. As he's taken another tenth or so out of Romer. And he's just right on the back. And he doesn't want Devonport or Romer to get away. Yep. Of course, with any downforce car, the closer you get, the more there is disturbed air coming off the leading car, which costs you front downforce. Uh, these cars not quite as prone to that as the open wheel cars with front wings and rear wings. But uh, any, the more downforce a car generates, the more it disturbs the air uh, for the following cars. The other thing to think about, look at the sunshine, look at the shadows right now as they come through the upper S's. And what do you think the sun looks like right about here as they're about to go through South Bend? It's got to be just about in their eyes, tough to see. And that's a corner you'd like to be able to, to pick up the apex around the uh, the walls that you just peek around there. Again, same thing here. A little shadow helps you at the exit, but then you're going from bright light to darkness. Yep. Your eyes are just playing tricks on you all the way around this lap. Look at this lap, though, that Romer's putting in. He, they pulled away from Vanacor behind him in that last sector alone, put a second on them as Romer suddenly has got the speed. It's really interesting to see the evolution of these cars uh, throughout the course of the race. As uh, you know, we, we talked about, you know, getting the tires up to temperature, getting the tire pressures right. And uh, these cars very susceptible to subtle variations in those kinds of things. So it could be that Romer tuned his car to be good on a longer run, mm -hmm. and it appears to be coming to fruition here. Could be, and again, with just a couple laps to go, these two, Devonport and Romer, are pulling away from Vanacore and McAleer behind him. Look how much gap there is. You don't even see McAleer back in the distance, where a lap and a half ago, it was a four-car train. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, just as it looked like Todd Vanacore in his recovery drive was going to be able to perhaps mount a challenge for these top two positions. He is nowhere to be seen. Some three seconds behind these two. I do wonder if perhaps these, these good years are really good on a long run because both of these guys are, I think, two of the only ones in the field on them, which makes the two of them very evenly matched as we get down here to the last couple of laps. Yep. Romer, of course, the defending champion of the class. Taking that come from behind win a year ago. His only gold medal in now eight starts. Well, Devonport has two wins. His last coming at Sonoma. I was out there for that one at Sonoma in 2018. He has two wins, and that's that's what Romer wants to get to. He wants to get to that second win and match what the rest of this field has. Lee Alexander came in with two wins. Devonport came in with two. Romer's saying, hey, I need to get my second to, to keep pace with these guys. He's got two more laps. It looks like he's just sort of calculating right now, trying to figure out where's the best place to get around his buddy, Jim. If you can stay this close for this long, it usually indicates, we understand McAleer has pulled off. Yeah, you can see him falling down the order. So McAleer with a problem. Oh no, 
Oh, is that smoke coming out of the back of Romer? It is. Well, he had touched the curbs there going down through, and I wonder if he's got a tire going down because he uh, had touched a little bit of the curbing going down roller coaster. That looks like tire rub to me. Yeah. And I wonder if he just uh, doesn't look flat, but it definitely looks more like a tire rub. He could have uh, snapped something to it, could be a little loose. That's, yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, when he really gets up to speed, again, the, the body work pushes down, and that yeah. may be where the rub comes from. Oh, yeah, and he's... Yeah, he's Trying struggling. To stay out of the way here. As he's got Vanicor, I think, coming through behind him. Yep. Oh, we're just looking at the last two laps being a real burner here between he and Devonport. And for Chip, he's just trying to hang on at this point. Vanicor goes by for second. Jason Miller is about 20 seconds back when they cross the stripe. So I'm guessing that... Uh He's thinking, you know, maybe I could maintain enough speed yeah. to finish on the box. And of course now up into second spot, but he's a long way back. As, uh, you know, his, his car just didn't come to life in the closing stages here. Uh, that, that's unfortunate for our defending champ, Romer. And uh, that's some tough luck, tough way to finish this race. But for Devonport, he's got about 1.1 ways around this thing. He's doing more trips around trying to earn his third gold medal. Coming to the white flag this time by, so 3.27 miles. Separates him from his third gold medal in the class. But as we've seen, this race has been one of some attrition, and he's got to make it around for the last lap. These types of cars, you get into this level of uh, sports racers, and all of this, this engineering that goes in them, they are built right there on that hairy edge. You've just got to stay on pavement all the time. You can't put any more vibrations in the car than absolutely necessary. And I do wonder if Romer just touching that grass a little bit. It could have been one or the other. He could have had something that caused him to go out there. Sure. Or that could have then caused the damage. But for Romer, that just shows you how sometimes these things are just a bit fragile. Yep. But when they're on, oh, the speed is just beautiful. Oh, they're great to as, see. As Devonport's demonstrating here, having just done another 44-second lap around this place, pulled away from the field. Vanicor right now, but eight seconds back. Miller has gotten around Romer, so Jason Miller in the win first Kohler now, sitting in that third spot for Romer. It's going to want to be one of those, you know, what if kind of days. Look how nice conservative Devonport is this time here on the white flag lap coming around South Bend, not taking chances, staying off at anything that looks curved like. Yeah, I'm sure so. so. <laughs> and he makes a liar out of you. <laughs> I was going to say, the crew's probably on the radio to him. Hey, easy, easy, you got it made. But uh, he is cruise, in cruise mode now all by himself out in front. Van Corn in second, Jason Miller up to third. Jason still looking for his first gold medal in 24 starts. He's been second twice. He's been third twice. Oh. Finished second here a year ago. 25 times out there, and he's got a, a bunch of podiums in a position to get his third. That's a good day. But for this guy, speaking of thirds, this might be his third gold medal. Jim Devonport coming to the checkered flag. No challenge from behind as he takes gold medal number three. Started this race back in fifth position. I don't think anybody counted him as one to watch. Sports car picked him to finish second. They got it one wrong. Todd Vanacore coming home in second spot. And Jason Miller, the car that makes the, the nicest noise out there, that six cylinder two stroke coming to the line. And right behind him, Todd Parks in the number 21. I would say right behind. There comes Parks with the bronze highlights on that car. Yeah, not, He'll take fourth place honors. Not that far back. Not, nice run for him, a rookie out here at this uh, runoff. It's a great run for, uh, for Parks. Yeah, just off the podium. Started eighth, ends up fourth. John Manfoy uh, in the red, number 22, should come home in the fifth spot. There he is. He started this race back in 10th. Yeah, exactly right. He was the at the outside of the last row, and he comes home fifth. Down the hill for the final time. Might be a potentially one of our hard chargers. Yeah, exactly right. 
And the last car running. It's a, a race of attrition. Yeah. And Manfoy gets the job done. Coming home in the fifth spot, he might well be uh, a candidate for the Sunoco Hard Charger Award. Yeah, Miller there, another podium. I think it's going to be his fifth podium over the years. And, uh, you know, when you're building your motors from absolutely bone scratch, you know, you start uh, getting podiums. That, that's a successful trip here to the runoffs. And uh, I know I talked to him earlier this week. He's looking forward to getting back to his home track next year at Road America. As oh, a lot yeah. of folks, especially these cars, they love Road America. I'm sure we'll see that guy, Todd Vanacore, back again at it next year. Uh, you will probably see Romer back out there. It'll be a really great class there at Road America. But one guy who's not quite ready to leave VIR is going to be your winner, Devonport. I think he's going to be pretty happy to hang out here in, uh, in the Virginia Carolina area for just a few more days. Getting a nice view of the long shadows here as we're late in the afternoon, approaching the 6 o'clock hour local time as we're just a little bit behind schedule as we had a couple extended red, uh, uh, black flag sessions earlier in the day for some track cleanup. But we got through our first handful of races, and we've got two more days of racing coming up in this 60th running of the SCCA National Championship runoffs. So looking forward to you being with us, if you would. Uh, kicking off the day tomorrow, we'll have breakfast with, with the inside the SCCA crew. With Jim Devonport, your winner. Starting back in fifth spot, Chip Romer comes home in second, about a half a second back. John McAleer, a great finish to finish on the podium. Actually, I think that's Jason Miller should be on the podium. McAleer had a problem, so he's further down the order. So Jason Miller should be third. Lee Alexander uh, also had a problem, so this order not quite exactly right. <laughs> Devin Port, Vanicore, then Jason Miller. Todd Parks finished fourth. John Manfoy, fifth. Chip Romer, sixth. John McAleer, seventh. Lee Alexander, eighth. Greg Case finishing in ninth. But let's head it down to our winner as he gets the gold medal, Hayward Wagner, with our winner, Jim Devonport. Jim, your crew guy came up to you and said, I don't know how you did it. Do you know how you did it? Well, we got a great start, which is what we were hoping for, and went better than we hoped for to go from fifth to second. Had a good battle with Lee, and unfortunately, Vinicorn and I got into it at the end of the back straight, but we'll see how that plays out. But anyway... We've struggled all week since we've been here. We put the car just together three weeks ago after a big crash. And anyway, to come away with a win just feels spectacular. My wife's home watching. She couldn't make it, so I got to say hi to Sandy and my family back there. And thanks to Bulldog, Chris, Jason, and Damien for putting this car together after it was a pile of parts after Road America. Feels really good to get my third. You got it in you to take one more lap? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Really Enjoy it. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, Hayward. And obviously a very grateful winner after uh, some adversity earlier in the season. As you can see, that 23 car led early and eventually was the survivor to lead often. As uh, you know, all it takes is getting to the finish. And uh, like I say, to finish first, first you must finish. And he was fast finishing and first. Jim Devonport gets it done as we've got our second and third place finishers as well. Hayward Wagner down pit side. And he's going to gather up Todd Vanacore and Jason Miller and have a chat with him. Sounds like he's ready. Hayward, take it away. Todd, in talking to Jim about his race, he said you guys got together uh, coming into roller coaster. Did you have a perspective on that? Yeah, I don't know what he was thinking. Uh, first lap like that, I mean, uh, there's maybe four feet. He tried to pass me on the left in four feet, and that ain't going to work, so he hit me, spun me out, but uh, really disappointing. I had the best car out there, and uh, then I had to deal with Chip's motor blowing up. It's all over my windshield. I couldn't see out at my windshield, so I had to slow up, but uh, by far I had the best car, winning car, but uh, it is what it is. Try again next year, so... A tough day for you here at the runoffs, but still good enough for a podium. A great recovery drive. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and grab Jason while we're at it. Jason, Jason Miller. <clears throat> Another podium for you, sir. Yes, yes. Talk about the satisfaction of a car that you've put so much work into putting on the podium here at the runoffs. Well, you know, it, it, it's, it's really not me. It's, it's my entire team, and the, collectively, I know I have the hardest working team here. 
Um, I'm so thankful to have them and just to be here and to put the car on the podium is just fantastic. So we we're real happy today. The guys up in the booth were speculating that you might be a little excited about where we're going next year for the runoffs. Yeah, you know, it, it doesn't hurt to have it in my backyard. Uh, certainly that gives me a little bit of an advantage and clearly I need it, but we're looking forward to it. Well, big smile here in third. Congratulations on the bronze. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks, Hayward. Following the race, Jim Devonport was penalized one position for the first lap incident, with Todd Vanacore being awarded the national championship. Here's the recap. Here's that start for Devonport as he goes from fifth all the way to second. You watch him dive to the inside, beautifully run. He seems to go right underneath Alexander and say, thank you very much, guys. I'll go right up to that front two positions. And, and he just had great pace right from the get-go. And later in that same lap, we'll have the incident that Vanacore was talking about, feeling that he had it done. Here it is as they come up. They just ran out of room, and the two came together. Uh, I, I won't try to second guess the stewards, nope. but that could be called a racing incident. As the 48, with a similar problem later in the race, Lee Alexander inherited the lead. Yeah, I think this could be his spin right here, yeah, coming right off there. of the tree. That's the spin. See, the, that, see yeah. the sparks under the car yep. as it bottomed out on him. And then Romer, side by side with Jim Devonport, Devonport taking the high wide and handsome line around turn one. And eventually that's all he needed as Romer's engine expired. And Jim Devonport, as we are gonna wrap this one, as the prototype race goes into the history books, all part of the 60th running of the SCCA National Championship runoffs. Thanks so much for being with us. On behalf of Larry McLeod and Hayward Wagner, I'm John Phippen. We hope to see you next time down the road. Mazda's been very supportive of racers within the SCCA and, and all the other grassroots organizations for many, many years. Really their support for racing and our type of racing is, is unmatched from any other manufacturer. They've been a great partner for many, many years. Mazda, hands down, is the best company to work with for sports car racing. Factory support is uh, second to none. It just feels right. You feel connected. 